seconds away on Studio 5. Hi Sharks, we're Rick and Melissa Hinnant from Austin, Texas. And we're here today to knock your socks off, literally. A booming business born in tragedy. So you're on bed rest in the hospital, but you decide or make a, do you make a conscious decision that you're not gonna be upset or angry or what happened? I think I was determined not to let fear set in. And then, a behind-the-scenes look at this massive theater with a 41-year history. In that 41 years, you know, we've had roughly 22 million people come through our doors. There are many moving parts in any sight and sound production. I'm actually seated aboard one of them. Plus... The Los Angeles and La La Land love affair is now official. We're showing you how in Studio 5, starting now. And welcome to Studio 5, so glad you can join us. Let's begin this show with a look at the top five stories in uplifting entertainment news. Let's start with the first two. At number five, people around the world pause to remember the 1.5 million lives lost in the Armenian Genocide 102 years ago, many of them Christians. The often forgotten story in Turkey's history is the inspiration for the new film, The Promise. The legendary Chris Myers and Ray Ogan. Starring Christian Bale. What's the ultimate promise in The Promise? I think it's the, you know, I mean, well, there's a promise that uh, the character of Mikhail has towards um, the, the, the woman he's betrothed to, that he will return. Um, but I think overall there's a promise that um, never to forget by the, by the filmmakers, by Armenians in general, by anybody who has lost somebody. Um, uh, whether it be through genocide or, or, or any other circumstance. A promise never to forget. At number four. Please welcome back to the show, Jennifer Hudson. Actress and singer Jennifer Hudson takes the late show to church. Talk about a child that do love Jesus. He is one. Then I said, talk about a child that's looking high. Yeah, I sing that ain't gonna sing the third verse, but y'all look at me. He's one. Sharing her favorite hymn with host Stephen Colbert and swapping childhood church stories. If I wasn't a Christian when that song started, I would be when that song was over. Oh, glory. And those are just the first two in the countdown. More to come in just a bit. If you are a fan of the ABC hit series Shark Tank, you know it puts entrepreneurs in competition to partner with some of the biggest names in business for a chance to make their dreams come true. But the Shark Tank isn't always easy. But for the couple behind Grace and Lace, the story is a bit different. Take a look, they sat down with us for this week's Studio 5 interview. Grace and Lace has taken the boring sock boring. <laughs> that women wear under their boots, and we've turned it into a lacy, frilly fashion statement. Rick and Melissa Hennett were season five contestants on ABC's Shark Tank. Yeah, but we came in with a strategy and we knew who we wanted. So it wasn't indecisive, not at all. I'm going to revise my offer. I'm gonna change the offer to give you exactly what you asked for. They left with a deal. Seven years later, the Austin couple run a booming business. Let's see what they're up to now. We always knew that Barbara would make the perfect partner for us. Not only has she given us incredible advice, she has opened up incredible business opportunities for us. What you didn't see on the show is the painful story behind the knitted socks. Start in 2010, you married, find out you're expecting a child. Mm -hmm. What happens? Tell me, take me back to that. Um, about halfway through the pregnancy, I was at a routine doctor's visit and um, 
suddenly the doctor looked at me and I could, I could tell something was wrong. Just from the look. Yeah. And she said, Melissa, um, you're going to give birth to your little girl within 24 hours and she's not going to survive. And I was rushed into emergency surgery. Rick was actually out of town and um, they wheeled me right from the from the doctor's office into in a hospital bed straight into emergency surgery and the doctor said well we'll do all that we can to try to save her but chances are very very slim and if she does um, if the surgery is successful you'll remain in the hospital for the duration of the pregnancy so four months do you make a conscious decision that you're not going to be upset or angry or what happened i think i was determined not to let fear set in mm -hmm. um, knowing the timeline of four, potentially five months of laying like this in the hospital, I had to keep my mind positive. I had to keep focused. To keep busy on bed rest, Melissa picked up a hobby, knitting. I started with a vision to make um, this baby girl blanket. Yeah. Um, and that's how time went f past for me. Uh, things started to t take a turn for the worse. Um, everything was going great. We had no doubt. <clears throat> I mean, um, Rick and I were so full of faith. We mm -hmm. just saw this as... Um, really just a hurdle. You know, our story is going to be a little bit different. And this girl, baby girl, is going to come into a world with a story that's a miracle testimony, mm -hmm. really, um, until that night um, when, I'm sorry, um, I, 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 my water broke and, um, and the doctors came in and said, there's, at this point, we, there's nothing else that we can do. Um, we can't save her and she'll be born too early to survive. Um, and she was. We had, um, I had little baby girl, Hallie, short for hallelujah. Mm. And, um, and she was perfect, but just too little to make. I'm curious, what were your prayers and conversations with God like? You know, I'll never forget Rick coming into the room after Hallie was born um, and looking at me and saying, Melissa, we have a decision to make. Um, we can either be mad and bitter at God and wonder why would a good God cause this to happen? Or we can choose to believe that something, somehow something is going to come from this. What happened with the blanket that you started? to knit for Holly. Mm. Um, I still have it. Um, just tears shed over that yarn, over that fabric, um, and God just really speaking me through it. You know, I felt the pain of struggling as a first-time mom of, you know, my body failed to create this baby girl. So I felt this, well, I can still create with my hands. Something still can come from me that's going to bring life. Now, fast forward a couple of years, her baby sister, which is now um, our oldest daughter, Sienna, uses it on her bed. In terms of making things mm -hmm. with your hands, mm -hmm. um, that's now your life's work, yes. it seems. Yes. So <laughs> let, let's get to the beginning yes. of, of, of that. So okay. you get out of the hospital mm -hmm. and you're, you're knitting Socks for yourself? What happens? <laughs> One day I wanted to make a pair of socks that had lace on the top of them so they'd stick out of the top of my boots. <laughs> I, I, I come up with these crazy ideas, okay? So I had this, I knew I could do it. It took me five hours to figure out how to do it. In fact, Seven. I, <laughs> I promised him I would never make another pair again in my life. Melissa also posted a picture of her socks on social media. And I'm like, man, okay, these socks are getting some attention. Uh -huh. So my entrepreneurial husband, who's the smart one over here, was like, why don't you put them up online and you know see sell them? Mm -hmm. um, so I did without quite thinking through what possibly could happen. Um, they mm -hmm. sold instantly. And with in a matter of three days, we had over 500 purchase orders for this one pair of socks. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's As in people free. that had already paid us. <laughs> we could obviously refund everyone and that would be totally fine. Or we could figure out how to do it. and. I think God's instilled in us how to figure out things, how to get over hurdles. They put their heads together and created Grace and Lace. Without a cent on advertising, their sales jumped from hundreds to thousands. Three months in business, 
they felt God wanted them to pitch their company on Shark Tank and aim to partner with Shark Wild for Corcoran. Two years later, they land a spot on the show. You go in and you are offered exactly what you asked for but you don't accept it. It's really interesting when we filmed, we were in there for an hour and a half. Okay. And within the first 10 minutes, mm -hmm. Barbara gave us an offer, but she only gave us half right. of what we wanted. The next <laughs> shark, Kevin O'Leary, yes. he wants to do the deal, mm -hmm. not with Barbara, just with him. And I was stalling as much as I could with the other sharks. And they were getting frustrated. Yeah. Very frustrated. Yeah. It got heated got in there. Heated. But we weren't gonna be swayed because we wanted to do what we felt like God said to us. Absolutely. And just like God, in the very end, after an hour and a half of back and forth and intensity, mm -hmm. Barbara said, you know what? I'm going to change my offer. I'm going to give you the full offer. Yeah. And... Done. Finally. Oh, my goodness. Um, we were elated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely elated. You certainly lost one child, but your family's still grown. Mm -hmm. You guys have how many children now? Three. Yeah, I think this journey has taught taught us that God has so much more in mm -hmm. store that we can't even imagine. And He's better than we can imagine. And if you'd like to wear some Grace and Lace apparel, you can check it out at graceandlace.com. Unfortunately, men, there is only items there for women. Trust me, I try to push them to make something for me. Still ahead on Studio 5. We are a safer, more prosperous people. What's new at the Sight and Sound Theaters? Right now we have Jonah playing in Lancaster and Moses in our Branson Theater. And next year, we're very excited. We're having a brand new show that we've never done before and that is on the life of Jesus. And welcome back to Studio 5. We are continuing our countdown of the best stories and uplifting entertainment news. Here are the next two. At number three, we have got the privilege of giving you a sneak peek of Shonda's new film, Enough. Take a look. I have these well-meaning girlfriends, Lord love them. And they signed me up for Match.com and then one called Our Time, which really means there's little time left at all. The Queen of Clean, Shonda Pierce, released the follow-up to her blockbuster documentary this week. To tell you the truth, I didn't think we had a story until just a few months ago. And I said, you know, there is, there is a story here in that learning to pick up the pieces after trauma and learning to pick up the pieces of your life after being a wife for 30 some years and all of a sudden you're widowed. And then what does that look like? At number two. When my parents bought me a brand new basketball, I found myself laying in bed and shooting with it. From basketball star to filmmaker, Kobe Bryant penned the poem Dear Basketball when he retired from the game. That love letter is now a short film, premiering this week at the Tribeca Film Festival. I started rolling my dad's tube socks and shooting imaginary game-winning shots in the Great Western form. I knew one thing was real. And there is only one left in the countdown. Be sure to stick around for that. The story of Jonah is a wonderful one, and the people behind Sight and Sound Theater, of course, are bringing it to stage. If you can't make it to Pennsylvania, you can now catch it on May 2nd in a Fathom event. We've got more on that in just a bit, but here's your look at the film. On a cornfield in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, sits a massive theater that's drawn crowds by the busloads for 41 years. In that 41 years, you know, we've had roughly 22 million people come through our doors at Sight and Sound. We're visiting Sight and Sound just hours before opening night of the new season. It never gets old sitting here talking to people the day before an opening. Well, the simple way to say it is we bring the Bible to life, but that's really what we do. We are storytellers and we want to move people's hearts towards truth through the power of story. There's a beautiful buzz of excitement in the air even before the cast takes the stage for... On the count of three, one, two, three, Jonah! Tonight's returning show. Jonah is one of um, 
you know, is a family favorite for kids. There's just nothing quite like the story of the whale. There are many moving parts in any sight and sound production. I'm actually seated aboard one of them. This is used in the production of Jonah. There are actually four of them, each operated by the actor, by a remote control hidden just in here. Take these stories out of the Bible and we bring them to life on stage. And we tell them in a, in a really large epic scale. And the reason we do that is not big for big sake, it's just we love to immerse people in the story and to experience what it may have felt like. This isn't just a job, it's a family mission run by people whose own lives have been changed by the work they do. 22 years ago, um, I was scouting out film schools because I wanted to be a filmmaker and I just had become a Christian at the time, I was six months. My mom, she knew that I wanted to be in the industry somehow. She said, hey, there's a theater down the road called Sight and Sound. She said, why don't we check it out? I said, Mom, I said, I, I'm not versed in theater. I, I don't know anything about theater, you know? She said, well, let's just go take a look. So my mom actually lined it up for me to come down here and get an, an interview. So it was August of 1995. Uh, my mom and I stood in the back of the entertainment center and opened the doors. And I looked across the auditorium and I saw Noah's Ark being built, you know, with a full audience. I'm thinking, what is this place? You know, this is not what I was expecting. And I was hooked. I thought, I think storytelling on stage is, is exciting and interesting, and I became a stage technician. And so I started by pushing sets around backstage. Never made it to film school. Never made it to film school. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a chapter two to this whole thing. I don't know, we'll see. But Sight and Sound is getting into the movie business, at least for one night bringing the larger-than-life immersion to a movie house near you. In the theater, you, you're there, and the whale is literally going over your head, and there's, it's happening all around you. However, on the movie screen, the cameras are able to get angles that you can't see from your actual seat in the theater. So you get to see the actor's facial expressions and the detailing in the costumes and the set pieces. And you can catch Jonah on stage at the Sight & Sound Theater through October 14th in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. But in case you can't make it there, you can catch it in theaters May 2nd. Be sure to check out the website for more. Up next on Studio 5. Are you shining just for me? The Los Angeles and La La Land love affair is official. We're sharing how. Hope and dreaming is not for nothing. And we're back with much more of Studio 5 and number one in this week's countdown. Take a look. At number one. 2,607 star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame will go to actor Chris Pratt. The Guardians of the Galaxy star receives his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame with his wife and son by his side. Better known for his goofy side, Chris gets a bit emotional. I feel, I'm humbled and I feel grateful, but I'm not sure I'm worthy. I'm a man of faith and I believe that God works in mysterious ways and gives us signs and gifts in life. And uh, those gifts oftentimes come in the form of people. The love affair between Los Angeles and La La Land is now official. The mayor has declared April 25th La La Land Day, just in time for the film's DVD release. Here's a look at some interviews with the actors. Here's to the mess we make. This is a movie about ordinary people going through uh, emotions that we can all relate to, um, but I want it to feel epic. Here's to the ones who dream. I love musicals so much and it's, you know, something I've loved since I was a kid and so to be part of an original movie musical was, you know, kind of a dream. Two options. You either follow my rules or follow my rules. Capiche? Thank you. I can do it a different way. Oh, no, that's, that's fine. Thank you very much. Mia is, um, is an aspiring actress who's been auditioning for quite a while. When we meet her, she's been living in L.A. for six years. It's a, it's a very deeply held and um, personal dream of hers. It's pretty strange that we keep running into each other. Maybe it means something. I doubt it. Yeah. Our prep 
process was about three months. We did a lot of dance rehearsal, um, learned to tap dance and ballroom dance. I did singing lessons, Ryan did piano lessons. Well, I've always wanted to play piano, so I was really, I felt lucky to have the opportunity to spend three months with a great tutor, um, just practicing all the time. City of stars, are you shining just for me? It's wonderful to work with Ryan in the sense that we, because we've known each other for so long and because we have gotten to work together before, it's just, I think it's just easy. I know what it's like um, to do scenes with him and I know he's really generous. I know he likes to ad lib. I know we can improvise. I got a call back. What? Come on. <laughs> For what? For a TV show. The one that I was telling you about earlier. The Dangerous Minds meets the OC? Yeah. Congratulations, it's that's really incredible. Exciting. I feel like I said negative stuff about it before. What? It's like Rebel Without a Cause, sort of. I got the bullets. Yes. You've never seen it. I've never seen it. Oh my. You know it's playing at the Rialto. Really? Yes. You should, I mean, I'll, 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 I can take you. Okay. You know, for research. For research. Yeah. It's a film about pursuing your dreams to, despite the obstacles. And I think that's something that uh, you either have done or you haven't had the luxury of doing. But either way, that's a theme that, uh, that resonates with most people. Maybe I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Maybe I'm not. It's like a pipe dream. This is the dream. It's conflict and it's compromise. It's very, very exciting. I hope that what people can take away from it is that hope and dreaming is not for nothing, is not pointless. And La La Land is available on DVD, Blu-ray, and all things digital. Check it out. And still to come on Studio 5. We're on the red carpet with the actress behind a powerful scene in the film The Case for Christ. Team, somebody have something, please! please. Call an ambulance! Baby, you have to breathe right now. I just, you, everybody, you need to breathe. Give, give her some space. Come on, baby, please. Look at Daddy. Okay, breathe for me. You're gonna be alright. I love you, sweetheart. Just hand it to me quick, quick, I'm a nurse. Welcome back, where does the time go? We are just about out of time for this show, so let's take a look ahead to next week. So meet me, Jesus, and I will follow you. Sample the sounds of Grammy Award winning songwriter, KJ Scriven. You haven't put this label on yourself, but there's a label out there on you, okay. alternative Christian music. Mm. What is that? <laughs> hey, if you tell me, then we'll both know. You know how I can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I hope you join me next week for that story. As for this week, I'm giving the final word to L. Scott Codwell. She stars in The Case for Christ. The film debuted in the top 10 and expanded theaters. L. Scott Codwell delivers my favorite line in the film. It's no accident, it's Jesus. Take a look. Cough, baby. Cough, baby. Okay. She's coughing. She's fine. She's okay. Just breathe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how to thank you. Thank you. You don't have to thank me. I'm a nurse at Mercy Hospital. She's going to be fine now. We are so lucky. Well, it's not luck. It's Jesus. <laughs> My husband and I went up to another restaurant tonight. <laughs> Something told me I need to be here. The main thing is, and I'm only going to tell you this, I was having a crisis of faith at the time that this role came to me. And it gave me an opportunity to do some questioning of my own and not just do some questioning but do some listening to the answers I was getting. Yeah. That's powerful. 
I mean, does it get any more powerful than that? You know, uh, because that sentiment that I express to uh, Leslie in the film when we first meet that it was just Jesus. I mean, you know, everything, anything, when you say who, what, where, how, whatever, that's the answer for everything. And so it, it just doesn't get any realer than that. It's no accident. It is Jesus indeed. That is a good word and the final word for this edition of Studio 5. Until next time, reach out and touch me at F from Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then you come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye.